I'm not crying, you're crying. Yeah, I was <laughs> Hey, what's up? It's Russ and Ryan. We got the chance to sit down with guitarist Lari Basilio today to talk about her Laney amps, her signature Ibanez guitars, and the ever-elusive Black Country Secret Path reverb pedal. We hope you enjoy. Thank you for coming. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Thank oh, you. Oh, good. You're not as excited as we are. Trust Aww. me. It's the least we can do. <laughs> so we were talking about how um, you got to be part of the Jason Becker song. Assembly Required, I believe it's called. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did that come about? Amazing. Yeah. First of all, honored to be, you know, invited by the amazing Nate Strauss for a great cause to help Jason. And I mean, how crazy is to play in a Jason Becker song? It's amazing. I mean, just honored and it was so much fun to record it. I had, I had a great time. Yeah. Did you get to do that in your own studio and then yes. email it in? Exactly. Yeah. That's great. First take. Uh, first, second, you know, <laughs> a few things. You know, yeah. it's the track is so much fun. Yeah, hey, it's awesome. Once you start playing, playing it, you 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 can't stop, and you want to play play over and over and over. So it's so much fun. Yeah. I bet it's one of those things when you watch the final track, you're like, oh, I sh I have to do it again because <laughs> that guy got more notes than I did or something. It's like everybody's <laughs> exactly. like shredding their butts oh my gosh. off. Yeah. I wish I could shred, you know, but oh please. I mean, well, what we were talking about too is it's not just how and obviously you're a great player. You always look like you're having fun doing it. There's a lot of joy in the way you play. Is that a fair assessment, would you say? Oh, yeah. I think it's, you know, the happiest moment of my day is the moment that I have the guitar in my hands, for sure, yeah. So it much really fun. It really comes through in, like, the video series you release from the songs from your most recent album, Your Love. Like, all those video clips, like, me listening to the album first without the visual was actually just complemented that much more with the studio footage of you and Vinny and Leland and, and the keyboard player. Esther, Esther Na. Now who, who is? Um, she's a good friend of mine. I met her uh, during a tour that we did together for Willow Smith. Mm -hmm. Well, she's uh, great. Back yeah. in 2019, it's been quite uh, it's been a while. Feels like forever. Ago. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, she's amazing. And then we, we became really good friends and uh, now and then we get to collaborate, mm -hmm. you know, playing together and stuff like that. It's a yeah. pretty heavy hitter session for her to be walking in on with Leland Scholar <laughs> oh and gosh. yourself and Vinny Caliuta on I drums. Mean, I mean, even for me, those guys are legends. Oh you know? my gosh. H how amazing. did the choice of Leland come into play since the prior album, you also had Vinny on? Exactly. But you went from Nathan East on yeah. that, uh, that one, Far More, yes. to Leland on the... So yeah, on Far More album, we had Nathan East, Greg Flynn Gaines on keys, uh, and Vinny Colaiuta. Also, Joe Satriani played a track with me First on that track, album. track, right? Yeah. <laughs> and Saida Garrett's uh, sang uh, her, her own song, Man in the Mirror, that she wrote. Uh, and I did a new arrangement for that song, and it was so much fun. We had a blast in the studio. And then for the album Your Love, I had Leland on bass, and also Sean Hurley. Is he from Vertical Horizon? Yes, yes. Okay. Among and other things, yeah. Yeah, yeah, among very sure. yeah. a I mean, a lot million of things. other yeah, things. Yeah. yeah, so amazing bass players. My goal with this, you know, recording my albums with these amazing musicians is always that I, I just wanted to uh, collaborate with the musicians that I that I love, that I admire, and you know, Leland and Sean and you know all of these guys, they're they're so amazing, um, and of course I I always try th to think about the the songs and the style of the songs mm -hmm. and I try to of course see what would fit best for each song each song right and of course Leland is, is an amazing player and Sean uh, he has this awesome groove and also the uh, this rock vibe that I love and so precise and I think uh, the mix of both in the same album it worked so great. Must have been a pleasure to have a rhythm section like that. You could come in and almost do anything. <laughs> I could <laughs> just sit there and listen yeah. 
<laughs> then play it's time is money though you gotta, gotta <laughs> exactly, make it work yeah we have that so like wearing a different hat like if you were to come into a session where you're hired to play on someone else's song when you go and it's your gig and you're the boss how do you how do you change direction on that what, what what's your attitude oh it's so different is it yeah. because you know i have everything i know everything in my head when it comes to my songs because i have all the arrangements ready uh when i do like my demos and pre-production i I try to get the closest possible of what I want to to have in the album. I try to to get the most closest in the demos. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course, uh, allowing the freedom that I have to give these musicians uh, when we're recording, because you know, otherwise there's no point of mm -hmm. having them. Mm -hmm. I love both words. You know, I love uh, to be able to express myself when, when I'm writing my songs and producing my own songs, but uh, being on the other side and record someone, someone else's, someone else's song. It's, it's also very special because uh, I'm there to, uh, to add mm -hmm. and to collaborate and try to read uh, the goal and the vision that, that person has for his song. So uh, different experience experiences, mm -hmm. and, but I love both so much. It's definitely a, a unique position that you're in when you're in playing on both sides of that. And just like the players Vinny and Leland, it's wholly your album and it like clearly has your stamp on it. But when you have pros like that, I mean, my goodness, they, it's like you know that they're there and that it's them, but they don't take away from your originality and your vision. Somehow they're making their mark while at the same time serving your songwriting creative direction. It's, it's insane. I think that's why they are who they are, mm. you know, and the level that they are, because they're putting in their personality mm -hmm. in each song without taking away the, yeah. charac the yep. character character of the song. Mm. And they add so much and they, they're, they're such a pros, you know, mm. and they're so careful when, oh, I hope you don't mind that I added <laughs> this, you know. Super <laughs> home voice and, and post, and, yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, I mean, how do you tell someone like that? Like if Vinnie Coleota comes <laughs> in and says, I had this idea, and you're like, hey, that's great. <laughs> you know, we'll try that for the B side. Like, what, <laughs> How do you do that? I mean, because it's your name on the record. It's funny. Uh, during your love, there's this little bridge. <laughs> simple and in the demo it didn't it didn't have this drum part but mm -hmm. suddenly he starts just doing some kicks yeah and i'm i'm starting you know i started you know melting right away because it's so so simple and <laughs> so, added to so it beautiful so and you couldn't beautiful. unhear it at that point like after the fact you're like that makes it better crazy insane right. and but it's still your song exactly yeah. and when we finish he was so sweet so sweet. Mm. I hope you do, you don't mind that I added this this. Kid. Oh my gosh, you crazy! It's yeah. perfect. Yeah. It, it's just a simple touch that makes so much difference in the song. But that's funny too because so much of what any of us do as as musicians, um, ego is a big part of it. You know, you want to. I mean, it's part of what makes you go in there and, and do the best that you possibly can. But at the same time, you have to know when to back off and and to be a musician rather than a guitar player. Sometimes you have to go in there and kind of say, well, you know, I know what not to play and I know when not to step on somebody. And when someone comes in and wants to add to your session, I'm sure it's, there's a lot of pressure involved with that. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, but you know, these guys, they know, they know what they're doing for sure. Yeah. They did and, their homework. Absolutely, <laughs> and also I learned so much from them in all of the sessions. And I can't wait for the next one, to be honest. Now, is that something that's in the works? Yes, I'm, I, I'm, um, I'm prepping for the You're recording. pre-production mode? Yes, I have all the songs already for the new album, wow. so yeah. What does that look like for you, for pre-production? Are you going, do you have a little, you know, like a home studio that you... Yes, I do everything in my home studio. Okay, uh, that's I great. write, yeah, all my songs there, and I, you know, I like to be very involved in the whole process, mm -hmm. so uh, it's pretty much me and myself, you know. Mm -hmm. I write everything, I 
make all the arrangements. I think, I love to think about the bass. I love to think about the guitars. You mean keys? Keys. Uh, my first instrument was organ, by That's the right. way. Yeah, so. Um, and you're four, right? Exactly. So I, I know a little bit, so sometimes I play a little, uh, but it helps a lot in the mm -hmm. pr production and mm -hmm. in the creative side as well. I like to think of everything, not only the guitars, and because at the end of the day, for me, it's so important that the music it's well constructed and interesting, mm -hmm. interesting for the listening, you know, sure. to hear uh, not only for because of the guitars, but because of the whole thing. Yep. So I just love to be involved from, you know, from the very beginning, beginning to, to end. the end, even the mix master. So I know exactly uh, how I want and where I want things. So your love. Like, I know Far More was like a day, right, with these guys? Exactly. Eight songs in one day. Yeah. How long was your love? Your, your two love days. we did two days. <laughs> yeah. Was it really? <laughs> yeah, I told you. All right, I'll see you later. <laughs> so three days for your next album. Yeah, that's, the, that's, a, that's a luxury when you think about it, you know? Yeah. Three that's days. a lot of material to bang out in such a sh relatively short yeah. period. Not relatively. Short but I mean, period of time. And it sounds like you, you have so much of it built up in your mind. You're like, you, you have a really clear idea of how you want it to be at the end. But I bet there are probably some some gaps in there where you go, you know, I'm going to leave this a little open. Maybe we kind of try it a different way when we're in the studio. Like, in terms of collaboration, I would think that that's something. Or is it like, nope, I have it mapped out and this is how it's going to be? Uh, most, I mostly, most of the time, I have it well mapped out. Okay. But of course, as I said, I'm never going to close the door mm. because when you have guys like this, yeah. you have to keep it open. Yeah, you'd because, be foolish you know, not to. You're right. Exactly. So many beautiful things can happen mm. and... Of course, I'm always open to it. <laughs> Your love. You said all these albums I had heard you say in previous interviews that they kind of encapsulate and capture a period in your life. Yeah. Right? Where you kind of like, you can reflect on that album. And it's like, for your love and for far more, you know, they, they do sound like different albums. So in your mind, for whatever you're comfortable sharing, like, where were you for each one of those that ended up kind of giving us the public a glimpse, you know, peek behind the curtain. I had just moved to LA from Brazil. So we was, everything was so new, you know, it was a huge move for, for me and my husband. Mm -hmm. New adventures, you know, <laughs> and challenges. Um, um, and I think the, the songs, you know, the mood, it reflects, you know, this change for me. Mm -hmm. And of course, a few years later, you know, I felt that my songs were a little bit more mature. And not only this, you know, the search for tones and the concept, the sound concept for the albums, both albums are so different. Yeah. So I, I for Your Love album, I was looking for more like a modern sound. Yep. Um, and, you know, since the beginning of the project, I was, I, I did everything aiming it, so. Uh, I did everything, you know, planning it and uh, even, you know, the choice of the studio and everything else was based on that. So And the d different locations kind of put you in a different headspace, Absolutely, too. Absolutely, yeah. When you're home, if you're in Brazil, there's probably a different feel and something that kind of comes out in the end result that you can't put your finger on. Uh, speaking of tones, I mean, we're looking at a beautiful guitar here. I mean, I love tellies. I'm a big fan of the the telly style in terms of the form factor, but you've taken it and I feel like there's probably nothing you can't get out of that guitar. I mean, I'm a huge fan of T Styles guitar yeah. guitars as well. You know, it's my dream guitar. Mm -hmm. He has everything I always, you know, wanted to have in a guitar. Mm -hmm. And so honored to be working with Ibanez and they they absolutely killed Hit a it. home run. Yeah. Yes. Oh my gosh, because I love this guitar so much. They nailed this guitar in the First prototype that they sent me. Really? Wow. Yeah, uh, I didn't do any, any, any modification to the first prototype. So they listened to you right out of the gate, though. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you had a lot of input as to how you wanted it to be, but yeah, but they I got mean, it right. Absolutely, and so I was involved in every single detail. I actually I had this specs in my mind for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, playing many different guitars over the years, we kind of know what we like, mm -hmm. what we don't like much, and. Um, it was, I was so happy, you know, to bring to life, you know, the, the things that I love in a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. And, and they, to work with Seymour Duncan too. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, amazing. Uh, yeah, and this absolutely this, this pickups are a huge part of this project, you know, because I wanted this guitar to be versatile. Mm -hmm. And I think this set, you know, HSS in a T style guitar mm -hmm. is the perfect combination. It allows me to play many, many different styles and achieve many different uh, tones. Um, I love so much the dynamic the switch. On, yeah, the dynamic switch on this guitar because it gives me nine different mm. tones possibilities. So yeah. it's amazing, amazing. So one of my favorite features of this guitar is the compound fretboard radius. Mm -hmm. Nine to 12. Nine to 12. Oh, nine to 12. Yeah, nine nice to 12. Nice going, Russ. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I just love it. It's super comfortable. Mm -hmm. It sounded great when you, when you were warming up, I was thinking, it, it, it's inspiring because I can't play like you can, but when I hear someone play like that, it makes you want to play. And it's, I mean, just the fact that you're here with the guitar and amp, one pedal, and it's like, boop, there it is. That's the sound. Would you play a little bit for us? Just sure. kind of demo the different uh, pickup Absolutely. sounds and things like that? It's funny because um, I didn't even touch the settings on the amp. It's just how it was, and I just love how it sounds. So sounds sweet. Yeah. And it's a Laney Super Cub, if I'm not mistaken. Lenny Cub Super Top, Cub amazing, super top. amazing. Yeah. Uh, one of my favorite amps. It has this super, you know, sweet sound. It's it's just sweet because I don't like uh, anything on my guitar to be too bright. Right. So it's just sweet. Mm -hmm. So as you guys can see, I hope you guys can see <laughs> the, yeah, the yeah, settings are <laughs> almost neutral. Neutral, I can say not. But yeah, not, nothing too tweaked one exactly, way or the other. Yeah. yeah. So That'll do. You're, and you're I going through a... Yes. The, this is the secret path. Yep. Beautiful river paddle yeah, from Black Country Customs, a paddle brand uh, from you. Lenny. Yep. In this sand return. So it's, it's a beautiful sound. I just love it. So this is the sound of the Cub Super Top without the river. Nice and dry. Yeah. yeah. With river. So this pedal, it has like three different types of reverb. I always go for the, the secret path. <laughs> <laughs> the name Don't of the pedal, all. yeah. <laughs> but it has also a beautiful spring reverb. It's, uh, it's awesome. It's an amazing pedal. It sounds very natural. Yeah. yeah. So. And it's funny, when, when you stepped off on it and was dry, it sounded more like a the typical T style. It almost sounded like you could play country and yeah. do your chicken picking and exactly. get it. And then with that on there, there's this depth and, and kind of. Yeah, so. Yeah, it's super fun. Yeah. Was your pickups and the Ibanez model kind of simultaneously worked on? Yes, okay. yes. I just figured that I, I would love to have, you know, an HSS configuration on my signature guitar. You know, first of all, I love a T-style neck pickup. I mm, just love, you know, me the... Me too. Yeah, I, it's my favorite. So... Would you reverb, right? Mm. So... I wanted to be fat. Yeah. So uh, when I uh, was working with Timur Duncan, um, we did like three revisions of the set, I guess, and it was it was an amazing experience, you know, to work on. He's a legend. Yeah. Oh my gosh, uh, it was so much fun, and I learned so much in the process mm. because you know, technical side was the a magnet bit, types. Yeah, and oh my like gosh, that. You're like, sure. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> <I> mean, good. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> but uh, they were so amazing that they really understood what a, the, the sound that I was trying to achieve, you know. And you know it as soon as you hear it, you're like, exactly. that's it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So I wanted to, the neck pickup to be like fat mm -hmm. and a little bit vintage. But clear. 
It's not muddy at all. So the dynamics are really important to me. So we were really careful that we don't lose any of the dynamics. So... It sounds like you could do a whole show on just the neck pickup alone. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Oh, I love this week. Really? Yeah, I can see why. Yeah. <laughs> and neck and middle. Um, a little more scooped. Yeah, a yeah. little bit. Um, here, uh, middle and bridge. And more mids. Yep. Yeah, just the middle itself. Yeah, yeah, you don't hear a lot of people using just the middle pickup yeah. alone, but I'm like, I was waiting for that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that sounds really good. <laughs> and yeah. also the T-style middle position. It almost sounds like acoustic electric art yep. or something, yeah. And of course you can... Go all bridge. All bridge and a split. Rock and out a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's... Oh, yeah. And split it. So it's, it's yeah. pretty versatile. I have everything that I need here. So. so like for a show, can you just bring the one and it yes. stays in tune, does everything you need it to do? Yes. I wow. bring two That's a luxury. because because I, I do different tuning, so mm -hmm. I bring two or more <laughs> just because of that, you know, but because... Is, is there like a white one and a purple one or do you... Yes, okay. yes, exactly. Cool. Yeah. That sounds awesome. It does sound good. Can I have that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, <thank you. laughs> that worked out well. <laughs> With the Laney... Um, you said you, prior to us starting, that you use it a lot in the studio, this particular model. Are you taking direct outs? Or are you miking up a cab? Sometimes I mic'd up a cab. Sometimes I do IR, cab IR cabinets as well. Okay. Uh, in my home studio, most of the time I do IR cabinets. You're not going to tick off the neighbors. Yeah. Or yes. <laughs> Uh, but I love, you know, playing around. So many possibilities. It's great. Yeah, Too many. It's fun. Yeah. But then for live, you're using uh, predominantly the Lionheart. Exactly. The yeah. 20 watt. Yes. Okay. Yes. With matching the, cab. Exactly. Right. The 212 cab is, um, is the one that I use the most. The Does it give you a little more headroom? Yes. Because it doesn't sound like you're using a ton of gain. Even when you're really ripping, it's still very clear and it seems very punchy and clean. I don't use a lot of gain. Yeah. You know, just. Just the right amount for me to feel, you know, comfortable. Get it to sing a little bit. Exactly. But, uh, but I don't like to oversaturate, saturate, mm -hmm. but that sweet spot, you know, for me to get comfortable. For me, it's all about comfortable. I have to feel, you know, good when mm -hmm. I'm playing. Yeah. That's the way the things flow, you know. We were talking about that, too, because there's always that myth that people say, you know, good gear won't make you a better player. But if you're a good player with <laughs> good gear... It can only be better, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. that's not bad. Yeah. And your name is on it, which is good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. How did you end up just even connecting with Laney in the first place? Uh, you know, of course, I, I knew Laney, you know, legendary brand, of course. When I moved to L.A., we got closer, and I got the opportunity to try, you know, uh, other uh, amps from, from their line. And, you know, the Lionheart was the one that really... Spoke to you? Yeah, exactly. And, um, yeah, I think to this day is the one that I use the most and is the one that I love bringing um, to life. I just love the mid-range of the amp. You know, it, it gives me a warm tone, tone. Beautiful, clean sounds. It has two channels, drive mm -hmm. and clean. But most of the time I use it uh, in the clean channel and it's an amazing platform for yeah. for the pedal. So yep. it's a great match. So that's how I do it live. I use the clean channel, clean channel with my pedals. And it's a very identifiable sound. I kind of think of that sound when I hear you playing. Um, you know, we were talking about influences and, and, and other players that have influenced us. And obviously being an Ibanez artist, there's so many big Ibanez artists over the years. Um, and then, but when I hear you play, I hear a lot of Larry Carlton. I hear a lot of Curtis Mayfield. I hear some some of the older stuff, smooth and round, that where you're not necessarily going for a million miles an hour. It's more about feel and tone. Is that close to what would be there? A what what are bit. some of your influences? A, a little bit, yeah. You know, y you said something about Ibanez and... Joe most, Satriani, you, yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with him. <laughs> He's pretty good, you should check him out. <laughs> I mean, most of my heroes, 
Mm-hmm. They play Ivan's guitars, you sure. know. So, uh, Joe Satriani and Tim and Steve Vai. I grew up listening to this yeah. guy. So, yeah. I think we, uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and of course, some, uh, we have some amazing players in Brazil as well, like mm-hmm. Kiko Loreto. Oh, um, that's great. Another Ibanez guy. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Um, there's a guy named uh, Eduardo Nui in Brazil as well. Uh, Huge influence of mine, mm-hmm. uh, very melodic play. Huge fan of Eddie, uh, Eddie Van Halen. So there's it, a few of those out there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's hard not to. Yeah. But of course, I also love guys like George Benson, mm-hmm. you know, John Mayer, Rich Cotton. Mm-hmm. For me, it's definitely more about. I try to be as versatile as I can, mm-hmm. but of course, I care a lot about melodies. So mm-hmm. I try to, you know, uh, really tell a message, something that could be understandable to the listener, not just, you know... Uh, Weedly deedly. Yes, exactly. I really try to tell a story. It doesn't matter if I'm playing like a 15-second solo mm-hmm. or like five-minute song. I really try to uh, make sense mm-hmm. at the end. You hear it, even just when what you were playing before, the, the chordal melodies and, and the arpeggios and everything, but it sounded musical. It didn't yeah. sound like someone who was going through a bunch of scales or a bunch of wa- look at me kind of parts, which you obviously can do. But it, it, to me, that's where I brought the Larry Carlton thought in. There's just this smooth round, like it just felt like you were in command of your instrument. And I think part of being comfortable on it is, is a big thing. But, Absolutely. Yeah. No doubt about it. Yeah. Now, sure. speaking of comfort zones, you're a lawyer? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So explain this one to me. Because <laughs> if I got out of law school, then it's like, you know what? I'm going to play music. Did some? Did they? Did your parents say you're crazy, or did, did you get a little grief, or was it like we've heard her play? Maybe she's onto something. <laughs> That's funny because you know my dad was the guy that who taught me to play the guitar. Mm-hmm. My parents very supportive of music since the beginning. They yeah. they brought home like my organ teacher when I was four. Mm-hmm. So they they always you know loved music and wanted to get us into music, but at the same time, I feel, my dad is a lawyer. My dad Pretty. just played music, you know, for fun. And, and he's a lawyer, you know, I don't know for how long, his whole life, sure. you know. So uh, he has his law firm in Brazil. And I even worked with him, like, for one year, maybe. Around, yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, at least he has something to fall back on, too, you know, which is nice. <laughs> so I don't know if maybe my dad was a little bit afraid of mm-hmm. Of me pursuing, but he supported it. Yeah, that, the the music career like a hundred percent because um, it has its challenges. But now I nowadays when I think about law, music, for example, mm-hmm. I see that any any career that you choose, you're gonna have you're gonna have to work hard to make it happen. So you know, I went to law school. I passed the bar exam in Brazil. Yeah. I worked a little bit with my dad and I never stopped making music during the same time. I played, you know, in bands. I played at church a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you ever play in court? <laughs> or bring a guitar? No, but I should, right? <laughs> yeah. Instead no. of objecting, maybe just like do a little sweet picking. <laughs> no. It's a good that, idea. Just think about that it. That would be great. That yeah. would be amazing. I'm here to help. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So <laughs> your brother also plays, right? Exactly, Joe. Guitar? Guitar, yeah. I saw a video on YouTube. I don't know if you had come across your uh, your radar. It was, I think it was called Walking by Faith. Yes. And first off, all four of you are smoking. Just like it's a crushing acoustic song. Oh, yeah? And, and that was another to. thing about your Love album, which to kind of tie the two together, I mean, she could play acoustic. Like you, you, you were, uh, f- I think because you have the signature electric, it could be easy for people to get lost in the fact that she's an electric player. But Your Love, the album, has a lot of beautiful acoustic work on that. But then that song, Walking, yeah. uh, Walking by Faith, exactly. is a, it's a killer, killer song. Glad you liked it. Thank um, you. How is, that's your original song, but that's like an acoustic version, if I'm not mistaken, of, of your electric. Exactly. Oh, unbelievable. And I've seen other acoustic things like It Is Well. Um, uh-huh. I mean, it's just a beautiful rendition of, of that. What makes you choose like a song like It Is Well to do a cover of? I relate with, you know, as I grew up playing in church. Sure. Uh, I grew up in a Christian family. I am Christian, so I just love this uh, hymns and... Uh, for me, it's a way of, you know, of course, expressing my feelings towards God. And mm-hmm. also, uh, 
you know, relaxing. It's so it's an amazing way for me to, you know, ease my mind of, you know, the any difficulties that we have mm -hmm. in the our daily basis. It's amazing to practice some, you know, arrangements. Oh as my well. gosh, it is absolutely beautiful. I just love, you know, playing around with the chords and trying to find new voicings or new new chords, new arrangements for, for the song. It's amazing. So much yeah. fun. Yeah. So when you're writing this for like your love, instrumental music is, is interesting because you hear these names of songs yeah. and you're kind of like, well, where do they come up with yeah. Fearless? Like that's your lead, lead track <laughs> off of your love. In your process, do you tend, not to say that it's an afterthought to name the song, but was there something that for each one of those that was driving you that you're like encapsulated your mindset of writing that tune and then that's kind of tagged on? I think each song is different, but sometimes I know since the beginning the name of the song. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I finish the song mm -hmm. and after... So it just conveys something to you? Like exactly. A, after, you know, many listen, uh, I listen to the song like for a couple of times to see what kind of feeling it brings to me. Mm -hmm. Like running to the other side, how about uh -huh. that? Like wh wh where does that title so, in your uh, mind? So that, that one I named like afterwards when I finished it. I, I just had this feeling that I, because the song is like, it, sometimes it's, it's even a little bit hardcore sometimes, sometimes yeah. uh, some parts of the song. And it, 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 it gave me this feeling of running. It feels hmm. like I'm running right. the whole song, so. Why not running to the sense. other yeah. side? <laughs> We're running to the other side. You could have just called it running, but running to the other side kind of has this air of mystery to yeah, it. Yeah, right? exactly. Most of the time it has like a meaning to me, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's very nice to add, to leave a little bit of mystery to the listener mm -hmm. so they can explore in whatever way the song takes them. Sure. Yeah. And so now you're touring, when you tour an album like this, you know, I've, and I've heard you briefly comment on this, but those are some big shoes to fill. So, you know, wow. you have Vinny, you got yeah. Leland, you got all these big, you know, big name players, and now you're hitting the road and you're holding auditions or whatever and be like, uh, yeah, can you play these parts? Can you go into it with that? Now, you have guitar layers on top of this. Are you running backing tracks as well? Um, I did a last tour in Europe with a trio and I did run tracks for some of the guitars because, you know, you had to. <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> because I put so many guitars on my records. Right, that's I the just tough part. love, you well, know, what are you layers. Leave out? You know, you have to get it all in there. Exactly. Yeah. So, but of course, my plan for next tours, um, including the US, is, you know, to have like a full band with me. Mm. So I definitely would need another guitar player, a keyboard player, mm. maybe a second guitar player. <laughs> well, sometimes, too, I mean, you could have someone just hitting a trigger, it could be for a different part. You can have exactly. your drummer do that. I mean, yeah, at the yeah, end of the yeah. day, I mean, it comes down to the fact that you're not trying to fool anyone by doing that. You, you exactly. wanted to produce and have that sound live. If you stop playing, they would know. Yeah. You know, it's not the Absolutely. tracks doing the work. Yeah, so exactly. So, it's yeah. okay. This is a safe space. <laughs> you're, you're okay with us. It's fine. <laughs> so what's next? Took um, my question. Took my question. Sorry. You only want to ask it? So what's next? <laughs> that was Feel a lot better. better. <laughs> yeah, that was good. So um, I just can't wait to record a new album. Mm. As I said, I, I have I three already... Days. Three days. <laughs> third album. Well, not third album. <laughs> I, so I have all the songs already. Mm. Maybe, maybe I'll do a couple more. I don't know. I just, you know, once you get in the space of writing, mm. in, in that mood, you just keep going and keep yeah, going. Yeah, how do you turn that off? I mean, you have to let it all come out, right? I mean, yes, and at some point, you, I just, I just can't stop. It's so good. It's, writing songs is one of my favorite things to do. I just love it. I love sit down. I love the process of mm. you know starting a song with a very small idea, and get to the end of the song, and and even how did I get here? Mm. It's so crazy. I just love this this experience. It's mm -hmm. amazing, and also. Uh, the search for tones uh, mm. throughout the song. It's amazing. I just love to tweak the buttons, you know, uh, exploring new amps, gear. And new gear, it's always a source of inspiration oh, to me. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, and I'm so lucky to, you know, have amazing brands that, as partners, you know, Lenny, amazing amps that have been, you know, like a foundation of my tone. Mm -hmm. They have these amazing pedals as well. Secret Path is yeah, always... sounds great. It's always in my pedal board. Oh, can I just show you guys Absolutely. my favorite feature of this Please. pedal is the... She's holding. It's the Secret Path. Yes. <laughs> it's the most beautiful shimmer sound. Okay. So it's amazing. Beautiful. 
beautiful. I'm not crying. You're crying. Yeah, I was laughing. <laughs> That's amazing. That is beautiful. And I, I didn't even know this pedal existed until we sat down today. I want that too. So yeah. I'll take that and that. <laughs> this was already here. Got to check his pockets on his way out. But, uh, you know, one last question I had for you. you. You're talking about how you love writing songs and so many things are kind of coming forth. What do you do when you hit a wall, when, when you, you say, I'm kind of burned out or, or it's just not working for me? How do you work through that? Um, I learned that I have to understand that it happens and put it aside for a while and do not insist because it's funny. It happened with that song Fearless, by mm -hmm. the way. I had this that, that intro like for months and mm -hmm. I couldn't get past the intro. Mm -hmm. It's a good intro. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so funny because I I put that aside and went work in on other ideas. Right. And the other ideas were like happening like very naturally. Uh -huh. Inspiration uh, might not work in, uh, in, the, in the same time that we were expecting it to work. Mm -hmm. And I learned that. Sometimes, you know, I have to do it. I want to do it right now, but it sometimes it's, it's just... It's it, it, there. It's, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Go for and, a walk or something. Exactly, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. with patience and time, I mean, I, I was able to finish that song. Mm -hmm. It took me a while, but it's there. It's ready. Mm -hmm. And it happened. Uh, not on, on, my ta on the ta exactly time that I wanted, but uh, it worked. So I learned that we need to give, give it a time. Mm -hmm. And I'll go crazy. Be a little patient. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess having a home studio makes it a little easier too. You can kind of go, well, listen, I'm not paying for, I could just get out of here for a minute and Absolutely. flip it back on when it's, does it ever hit you in the middle of the night where you're like, oh my, I have to get this down? Or? It's usually in the, mi in the middle of the night. Really? It's crazy. Kind of when you're drifting off. Yeah. yeah, it's insane. I go to bed sometimes, you know, singing songs in my head. It's crazy. It's yeah. And then you're like, wait a second, that one already exists. <laughs> <laughs> this is Beethoven's sixth. <laughs> Well, we thank you very much for coming out and chatting with us. Guys, thank you so it much for having pleasure. me. It's so much fun. Can you play us out? Yeah, that's what yeah, I was hoping. Can, of can you course. rock out a little bit? <laughs> or not. <laughs> whatever you're in the mood for. Don't listen to me. Really? You sure? Yeah, yeah, whatever you want. That's beautiful. Thanks, guys. Thank you. thank you very much. Pleasure, pleasure. Thank you guys for having me. Thanks for watching. And a huge thank you to both Lainey and Larry for making this video possible. Make sure to like and subscribe for more artist content like this. And for all gear mentioned in this video, head over to AmericanMusical.com.